Wellness on Select 2013 Acuras. All right, back to the phone lines. Here's uh, Reza, who's in uh, Ottawa. Good evening. Uh, hi, hello, gentlemen. Uh, my question is on Penrest. Uh, the stock looks dirt cheap. It's trading below its tangible book value. It has great assets, and it pays like more than 10% dividend. So what's wrong? <laughs> Can I get your opinion? Thank you very much. Well, Risa, there's, there's a couple of things. First of all, let's talk on the fundamental side. Uh, they've had a very difficult time executing and generating production growth. That is a concern. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the company itself. You know, there's been some departures from the company recently uh, that calls some things into question. I think the third thing that would, would concern me and probably the most important thing is the share price performance, mm -hmm. one of the weakest performing uh, companies in the oil, ga oil and gas sector. Uh, so to me, if you think that there is some risk in the market, you don't buy the weaklings, you own the leaders. And this is certainly not one of the leaders in the group. Uh, and if you think that there's risk in oil price, which we do, uh, it looks like you could see oil trade down into the mid-70s if you look at the charts. Uh, then you want to be very careful of those that are weaker performers, especially at this time of year because you're going to get into tax loss selling and this is one that would be a candidate. You mentioned oil field services companies. You'll talk more about them in a while. So does that mean you're out of any any of the, let's say, the Suncors, the CNQs? You're not in those ones? We don't, we don't have any major E&P companies or integrated, integrated oil companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to be clear, it's not service companies that we own, it's the infrastructure companies, the pipelines, the processors, the, trans, the, 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 the transport right. companies, uh, because it's volume growth specifically. Uh, but uh, I think that it's a difficult time, both on the gas side and the oil side, uh, to, to own the producers, and I think that there's risk. We got an oil boom going on in North America, um, which is going to make pricing power difficult. Okay, David, uh, we'll talk to Ken now. He is in Calgary. Hi there, Ken. Mark, uh, David, I was wondering if you could, if you have some suggestions for a dividend paying portfolio consisting mainly of banks, REITs, uh, infrastructure, uh, telecoms, fairly solid companies. Um, and I agree that rallies probably should be sold. Do you have any way, without using options, where a guy can step in and protect the price and just clip the dividend? And I'm thinking maybe HIX or something like that. Yeah. If you could give me some ideas, thank you. S certainly, Ken. You could you could uh, to short an index unit or buy a reverse uh, reverse participation index unit. Uh, in the funds that we run, we do hedge uh, or can hedge the portfolios. We are currently hedged against the TSX and the S&P 500 to take impact out. We do that using futures contracts, uh, but you could, do it with, you could do it with puts. I think that it's not a bad idea, given the market that we're in, to be able to maintain the yield. It's not expensive to do. Uh, harder to do with a reverse participation unit, but it is a way that you could go about doing it. All right, so futures and puts. What about uh, an ETF like the one he suggested? The, yeah, certain, uh, cer certainly you can do that, yeah. and certainly that will help. It'll help you to maintain your yield and take some, some uh, equity market exposure out. And uh, what percentage would you want that to be the, to, to protect your portfolio? Listen, this is, this is something that you have to assess because obviously there is risk that the market turns around and rallies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, about 70% of the assets that we manage are in this income strategy that we run. Uh, and I think that our investors want yield and they want dividend growth, but they aren't looking for a lot of equity market volatility. So we try and take that out in a market like this. Um, it really comes down to the investor, and that's something you should really talk to an advisor about. Right. Okay, David, a short pause. We'll come right back. Yeah, more questions on the other side for David Burroughs on North American Large Caps.